November storm. You don't think life-threatening, though? I still don't think it's life-threatening other than those acts of God where a person might be injured due to a missile hazard or uh, just not taking the proper precaution. Is the island still open? Can you get on and The open? islands are open. Uh, the bridges are all free and clear right now. Uh, knowing what happened in December and knowing the tides down here, these bridges will close, I can guarantee, during the high tide tonight at midnight. Everybody should remember, that doesn't mean that the water starts at midnight. That means that's the height of high tide. Okay, what uh, he was saying there is the height of high tide is at midnight. There's a two-hour shoulder period there. So if you want to get on or off one of these barrier islands, not just Ocean City, but anything up around Brigantine or down south of us here, you've got to be on or off by 10 o'clock and don't expect to be able to go either way again until about 2 o'clock. So there's a four-hour period where you won't be able to get there from here, so to speak, just because of that rising water. And of course, the U.S. Weather Service says that water could be as bad as it was during the December storm. We'll be standing by and try to have everything for you as it unfolds. Two things as I think of them real quickly before I throw back to you, Ken. There are at least two other evacuation centers I know of that the Red Cross, Cross has set up. One is in Avalon, the other is in Lower Township. Try to have more for you later in the day. Reporting live from Ocean City, I'm Terry Ruckles. Ken? Terry, thank you very much. We've been telling you all afternoon this is not only the storm of the century, but it is a life-threatening storm. Uh, they have now upped the count. It is uh, 15 dead blamed on this storm. 13 of the deaths in Florida, believe it or not, due to tornadoes that uh, swept through that state. We have an update. We've uh, promised sports fans that we would continue to keep them appraised of the latest with the St. John Syracuse game. And uh, uh, Channel 10's Dave Culbreth has that update for us now. Syracuse and St. John's, Syracuse in orange, St. John's, Chanel Scott put the Redmen up 6-5, then Syracuse's Dave Sayak came right back and pulled the orange men to within two, 11-9. Later, Adrian Autry tied it at 11-11, and right now it's 21-15 in favor of Syracuse. Dave Colbert, Channel 10 Sports. So there you have it, the Flyers game postponed tonight. We have a list of some closings we want to run through very quickly that uh, is uh, uh, very important. Uh, Philadelphia International Airport closed. Major airports from Boston to Atlanta also shut down because of the storm this afternoon. U.S. Air has canceled all flights throughout New England, New York, Pittsburgh, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and some areas to the south. Be advised of that if you're flying U.S. Air today. And uh, we are going to go to meteorologist John Belaris for an update on the storm now. John? All right, Ken. Uh, there is a lull in the storm right now. As you can see on the satellite, some breaks. Uh, just This is actually east of the storm center. The storm center is still west of Hatteras, but some breaks. But it's temporary as the storm system continues to move up the coast. We'll once again get into the vicious winds and the light rain and light snow now. Uh, may become heavy again and may become heavier snow late tonight and overnight as the whole storm system begins to pull away and the winds will increase rapidly once again as this storm touches water and begins to pull away. Now tonight's map, the storm should be in the Chesapeake Bay around 7 o'clock. Wind still relatively light. And then as the storm pulls away, the hurricane force winds will return. And uh, perhaps with the dropping temperatures, a change over to snow once again. And some of the snow could come down heavy in a few spots. Uh, overnight and towards morning, and that means additional accumulation. Snow amounts as it stands now by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, 10 to 15 inches in and around the city. The city officially has 11 inches on the ground, 4 to 6 inches down the shore. Uh, officially, they have 3 to 4 down there now. They could add on another 2 or 3. 12 to 24 in the Lehigh Valley and 20 to 35 in the Poconos. Now, tomorrow an interesting event will take place. The storm will pull away. The polar plunge will uh, be in its wake. Temperatures will be dropping. A uh, wind chills minus 15 to minus 25. But the winds, the strong westerly winds down the shore, will create what we call a uh, tidal blowout. That means dry dock. That means the opposite effect of the waves coming in. It moves out so quickly with these hurricane force winds that the boats may actually touch bottom. The water will be removed from the bay for a while and you get what just the boat's just sitting there on the mud for a time. That's a possibility uh, during the day tomorrow, Ken. Okay, John, thank you very much. Uh, we should mention also that the uh, flower show has been canceled for today. If you hadn't heard, they tried to uh, keep it going, but the, it was just impossible down there at the Civic Center. The St. Patrick's Day Parade in Philadelphia has uh, also been canceled. Uh, in Newcastle County, I-495 is still closed around Wilmington. Most of the interstates have been closed. There's a state of emergency declared throughout the state of Pennsylvania. There's a full state of emergency in the state of New Jersey, and there's a limited state of emergency that's been declared 
in the state of Delaware. So this is a major, major storm that we have uh, that has hit the Delaware Valley and that uh, you just heard it from John Blaris, more is to come. Interestingly enough, uh, all the Delaware Valley Acme markets will be open until 6 o'clock tonight. We would advise you uh, to uh, walk if you have to and not to necessarily get out there and try to use your car. Uh, all the Acme markets plan to be open again Sunday on regular hours. If you absolutely uh, have to visit one of those, uh, you can do that. Uh, I'm told we're going to go to the telephones right now. We have Sherry on the line from Queens Village. Hi, Sherry. Hi there. Where is Queens Village for those who don't know? Uh, we are just south of South Street. And uh, what's the situation down there today? Well, it's definitely a good foot of snow on the ground. Uh, there's a considerable amount of cars uh, driving up and down the streets with, I would say, minimal sliding around. Um, there are a few people out there that are definitely feeling the winds. Um, I would advise them all to, to go inside at this point. Absolutely. Have you had a chance to venture out there today? Yeah, I had a, a real hard time getting my front door open. I'm over on Front Street, and uh, the winds were pushing it shut, and I had to kind of dig my way out. Um, but I, I had to go out there and just see what it was like. Mm -hmm. You see any problems out there while you were out there besides the usual uh, stuck cars, etc.? Uh, there's a tree down on South Street. Um, but aside from that, um, once again, the cars seem to be getting by okay down here. Good, very good. Well, let's hope that the situation stays that way, but we know there's a lot more of this storm to come. Thank you very much You're for welcome. talking with us today. Uh, if you had the chance to venture out there this morning, uh, you knew that it was an adventure. And for Channel 10's Lou Ann Kahn, it was really an adventure getting to work today. We're trying to get to work. We've gotten stuck three times before we've gotten out of our neighborhood. And fortunately, this very nice man is helping us. <laughs> Do you think we'll make it? Well, if I can help it, you should make it. <laughs> <laughs> the husband, the loyal husband. You owe me big time for this. <laughs> <laughs> and the forlorn reporter. Well, I said earlier that we could do it. We're going to need a little help, but we'll, we'll get there. Well, at least we're moving, and that's, that's good. I mean, it's, but it's really, it's really slow going. It's slick. It's uh, a little scary. Here comes, ah! Part of Lancaster is blocked off because of a downed tree and wire, so we uh, take a little detour. Uh, it's three in the afternoon and very surprising that there's no plow out here, so we're just uh, negotiating the road as best we can. We just saw a SEPTA bus and they're running. Uh, and we're just trying to stay in the tracks of the car in front of us so we can keep on moving. A lot of people are running red lights because they're afraid to stop, and uh, so if you're driving, uh, you got to really be careful. We're going up the hill, and we're going to make it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes. Oh. All right, we're moving now. Here we are, Channel 10. You know what, Kathy, we really are some great news babes because we're only three minutes late for work. Not bad. I'm glad she made it, and a lot of other people made it to work today who had to get to work, but if you don't have to go outside, we still advise that you stay inside. There's a lot of storm left. We are told that uh, uh, before we get to the cancellations, I know we're going to do that, but uh, the biggest uh, tournament basketball game that a lot of people have uh, been wanting to watch this afternoon is Syracuse 25, St. John 17. But more than that, the storm is affecting that particular game. Apparently, water is dripping uh, through a hole in the roof onto the playing surface. The Big East Commissioner has ruled that play should continue there. Um, if, um, if it continues, of course, that, that may change. But in the meantime, they said that between the plays, a gentleman runs out to the floor with a mop and is trying to clean up the floor to make sure that the, the players are safe and don't skid on the water. But at Syracuse 25, St. John 17, we'll keep you appraised uh, of that game. Also, the 76ers game for tonight uh, has been canceled. Let's take a look at the, some of the other cancellations throughout the Delaware Valley today. All city septa bus and trolley service canceled. The Market Frankfurt L, all suburban bus lines except 101 and 102, and SEPTA's R8. Regional commuter rail lines are running. But be advised, they are at least an hour and a half behind. 
Broad Street Subway is running and it is on schedule this afternoon. All New Jersey Transit buses have been ordered off the streets. You won't find any buses in North or in South Jersey uh, this afternoon. The shuttle is operating, however, between Atlantic City's train station uh, and the casino. This is a major winter storm that we have here now. We're told that 67,000 people throughout the Delaware Valley uh, do not have power this afternoon. That includes 32,000 in southeastern Pennsylvania. In Newcastle County, Delaware, uh, some 10,000 people don't have any current. And in uh, South Jersey, 25,000 people would like the juice, but they don't have it. That means that uh, the high winds have brought down a lot of uh, uh, wires. They've also brought down a lot of trees on top of wires. We had the rain, of course, the heavy wet snow, uh, all of that makes for big trouble if uh, you happen to work for the electric company. Uh, they continuously tell us to remind you if you see a downed power line, assume that it is hot, that it is a live power line, and to call uh, your local service center and have them come out and take a look at it. Do not touch it, of course. Do not get near it. And good advice would also be try not to run over it with your car. Uh, but 67,000 people out of power uh, throughout the Delaware Valley. The state of emergency declared in Pennsylvania, as we said before, and in New Jersey, a full state of emergency and a limited state of emergency uh, in Delaware. Uh, highways closed include most of the interstates throughout Pennsylvania, uh, including, of course, the Schuylkill Expressway, where they're trying to plow it and work on the uh, on-off ramps, which seem to be the biggest problem these days. Uh, I-95, the 20-mile stretch through uh, uh, the Philadelphia city limits, especially hard hit. The crews are out, and they are plowing that. Uh, as well. Philadelphia Orchestra uh, has been canceled for tonight. Um, we can tell you also that um, um, all Delaware Valley Acme markets will be open until 6 p.m. tonight and hope to have a regular schedule tomorrow. Let's go to uh, Upper Darby now for the latest on the situation down there in Channel 10's Bill Baldini. Well, Ken, things are changing for the better. Uh, compared to what it was like an hour and a half ago, it's like a walk in the park. The wind is uh, not nearly as bad. There's no snow in my face. I think we must be on one of those holes John Valeris was talking about, a hole in the storm or maybe even the eye of the storm. But right now it's nicer than it was since 6 o'clock this morning. A lot of people around here have found some very clever ways to get around. And here's just one example. This is one of the more creative ways to get around today, especially on the back roads. Jeff Myers of Havertown got bored at home so he decided to take off on his skis. He attracted a lot of attention, got a lot of waves from people, and the skis served his purpose very well. It's the best way to get around now. <laughs> How far have you gone with these skis? Oh, I just started. I live right around a block, so I was just I just started and I saw you guys came over and said hi. Is, so, it, is it tough to negotiate? It's a little tougher. It's a little tougher. It's, it's not too bad, though. The hail's making it a little hard now. I gotta wonder, you don't have a hat on. Actually, my ears are what ears are what really bug me so and my top of my head's not too bad is it easy skiing today ah uh, if you get in a place where it's not where they're where it's nice and fresh yeah it's uh, fine but if you get in the ruts it's kind of tough you tend to fall over a lot so well that's one way to do it here's another way to do it get a snow plow near your car you can move anywhere these guys have been on the road all day long they've done a rather good job here on township line and evidently they're keeping this road open and they're taking advantage of the lack of wind right now to make some headway I have to mention one other thing. Earlier you said, did you have anything to eat? And I said, no, I haven't all day. Well, at least three different people came up to our truck with food, coffee, and everything to make our stay a little bit more pleasant. We don't need any more food. Thank you very much. But people are unbelievably kind to not only us, but to other drivers who have been stuck. Time and time again, I've witnessed people get out of their cars and help push somebody else. So there's a silver lining to this story. Bill Baldini, live in Upper Darby. Back to you, Ken. That's very nice, uh, Bill. Uh, by the way, uh, while you're out there, have you met anybody who is uh, um, delighted by this whole storm? Some people uh, earning some extra money uh, plowing out driveways, uh, shoveling uh, sidewalks, that kind of thing. Absolutely. On the secondary roads, there's a lot of people who have these, uh, you know, Broncos with these snow plows on them. Well, you know, they just can't wait. I mean, they just love this idea because they're making money hand over fist. One fellow told me he just may work two straight days and take five days off. That's just the way it is. You got to make hay while the sun shines, or you got to make money in this case while the snow comes down. Back to you, Ken. Right, we've seen some kids out there having a really good time too. Bill Baldini down there. Thank you very much for that uh, live report. Um, and one other interesting note: we gave you the score about the uh, the Syracuse uh, St. John's game a little earlier. 25-17 uh, Syracuse in the lead, uh, and we told you that water is dripping through the roof onto the floor. I'm now told that the Big East Commissioner has ruled that uh, not only is play going to continue, but uh, it, 
there will be no penalties for uh, traveling, uh, for uh, walking, if you're familiar with how basketball operates. Of course you are. Uh, if uh, one of those violations is committed, uh, the uh, possession will not change. So they're altering the rules just a little bit uh, in the Big East tournament game. We have the Lehigh County Emergency uh, Management head on the telephone right now. And uh, Terry, what's the situation going on up there in Lehigh County? Well, very frankly, the roads are very, very bad, except some of the major arteries. Uh, as you know, the governor declared the interstates closed. The back roads are impassable. The drifting has started. Um, we haven't had, luckily, any uh, reports of any power outages so far, and we haven't had any reports of any damage so far. Uh, we are involved with the Marine Corps Reserve, the National Guard, and the Army Reserve in supplying us vehicles, and we've been transporting nurses and doctors to the hospitals on a priority basis, and uh, that's about the extent of things at this point. Meteorologist John Belaris has been telling me that uh, you guys up there stood a, a chance of getting uh, a little bit more snow than we got down here. What's it measuring well, on the ground? The, only, the reports, that, well, the last report I had was nine inches, and that was early in the day. I haven't even had time to talk with the Weather Bureau. They're predicting up to two feet of snow. Okay, and what's the situation outside your door right now? Are you in one of well, those uh, breaks? Amazingly, I looked out a little while ago. Uh, we had a thunderstorm. Uh, and we also uh, had pretty good visibility. Yeah, well, I'm surprised. I, you know, I understand that's going to change. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot more of this storm to go yet, and uh, you stay on the case because I know that uh, your services uh, are critical and they may be needed uh, as the storm continues tonight and into tomorrow morning. Okay, and thank you for calling. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Uh, we're going to take a look at some guys that uh, we found out on the street uh, this morning who were having a very, very good time as the snow fell. And uh, we're going to take a break in our storm coverage, the coverage of Storm of 93. Uh, watch these guys have a good time. hassle approach. There's a new easier way to buy a car at your Ford dealer. It was great. We loved it. Now every new 93 Escort LX model has one price. Ten, four, ninety-nine. Three door, four door, five door, even wagon. All well equipped, all at the same great price. The imports all had price increases. Escort actually came down in price. Come see your Quality Plus Ford dealer today and experience a simpler way to buy. Four Escorts, one price. There's nothing more to say. You're witnessing a highly sophisticated conversation. It's between the BMW 325i and the driver. It's not based on the language of words, but of feelings. How the wheel feels to the fingertips. How the pedals feel to the foot. How the seat feels to the body. But what's truly amazing isn't that this entire conversation took place in just 2.7 seconds, but that it took place at all. Mr. Moby's Oscar preview on Time Out tonight at 7.30. Channel 10's coverage of the Storm of 93 continues. And welcome back. I'm Ken Matz, live in the Channel 10 newsroom as our coverage continues. We're also trying to keep you up to date on the uh, Big East tournament results, the semifinal game at Syracuse versus St. John's. Uh, the latest score at halftime is 33 for Syracuse, St. John's 26, a close game. We'll keep you appraised of that kind of uh, situation, all the basketball this afternoon. Um, there were a lot of motorists earlier today who were out and about. Some of them found themselves in a very difficult situation. Channel 10 anchor Jane Roblo has the latest on their predicaments. 
snow truck started plowing at the crack of dawn today, and the fast-moving storm has given drivers no chance to rest. Even running full steam, full time, the plows cannot keep up with this storm. Back roads like these in Fairmount Park spell trouble for many a frustrated motorist. What was soft, pretty flaky snow this morning was a lot of fun. Now it's turned brutal, sleet coming down, and it hurts when it hits your face. It's already building up along the side of the car. Not snow, this is ice. But even that's not enough to keep these diehards at home. My daughter was at the medical school. I are out there for a graduation. And there's no way you're gonna miss that. But they don't have snow in Haiti. No, we don't have that, but I love the snow. I love driving in the snow. Well, you stay careful then. Yeah, I will. We just uh, keep it a uh, regular schedule. We don't want the weather you pack it up. <laughs> Thank you. I'm stranded and I, I need a tow truck. Some motorists didn't enjoy good luck. Uh, Brian Chisdak drove all the way in from Allentown, but found himself stranded and in need of our phone. Where exactly are we here? You're Brian, where, why are you out in this kind of weather? Well, I was trying to go to a Flyers game. And then what happened? Well, we didn't quite make it. I think at this point, we're just going to try to make it to a gas station. If it's any consolation, Brian, the Flyers and the Kings called it quits after one period. Looks like the only game on ice today is this one. Jane Rovolo, Channel 10 News. And although things look pretty calm probably outside your door right now, I'm told by meteorologist John Belaris, uh, around 7 o'clock tonight, that probably is going to change. He also gave me the uh, snow figures for Allentown, Pennsylvania. 14.3 inches officially recorded in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and up there in Lehigh County where they got a little bit more than we got here in the Delaware Valley. Let's take a look at the latest uh, closing list that we have right now. Uh, once again, all city SEPTA bus and trolley service is canceled. The Market Frankfurt L, all suburban bus lines except 101 and 102, and SEPTA's R8. The regional commuter rail lines are running at least an hour and a half delayed. Broad Street Subway is running and it is on schedule. And all New Jersey Transit buses have been ordered off the streets for today. So, shuttle service operating between Atlantic City, the train station, and the casino. And if you see somebody waiting for a bus out there in, uh, in the Delaware Valley and that bus not likely to come, you might want to advise them to get inside and seek some shelter. This is a major winter storm. Uh, we've been telling you about that all afternoon. And even though you may be getting a break outside right now, uh, that uh, situation will change probably by uh, uh, 7 o'clock tonight. Mayor Jim Lavelle is on the telephone right now of Dewey Beach, Delaware. And uh, Mr. Mayor, what's the situation down in Dewey Beach? Well, it's improved uh, tremendously. Uh, Early this morning, uh, we were very concerned about the uh, possibility of having the worst storm of the century. Uh, we had heavy winds. They, uh, we know that they gusted in the close to 70 miles an hour here in Dewey, and they, we heard neighboring towns are in the 80s. But uh, we've weathered very, very well, and the, what we hear right now is that the winds they, uh, will come back up at us a, uh, later this evening, but they'll be out of the west. And uh, so the, what we're doing right now is we're advising people that they'll come back into town, but uh, uh, we may have uh, problems uh, with electrical uh, going out because of the winds. But uh, all in all, we feel very, very uh, satisfied that they, uh, we did as well as we did. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, we were probably uh, very lucky that the storm did what it did and gave us a little break here. How are the crews doing on the streets down there? Are they making some progress in this uh, break in the storm? Yes. The, uh, uh, in fact, the, the people that they work with the water and sewer, uh, they've pretty well uh, cleaned up all the problems that they've had, and all the water and sewers turned back on in Dewey Beach. That's fantastic. Good news. Uh, and you're prepared for uh, more to come tonight, then? Yes. The, uh, begin for a uh, coastal town, a, uh, our concern is the wind when it comes out east. Uh, tonight it's going to come out of the west. And uh, that's heavy, and that's a, that's a problem for some communities, but not for us. Very good. Mayor Jim Lavelle, Dewey Beach, Delaware, thank you very much for talking with us this afternoon. We're going to take a look at some tips now uh, on safety that may affect you as this storm redevelops tonight and continues to whack the Delaware Valley. Meg Grant has those tips for us. As the owner of a four-wheel drive, I was in high demand today, but it was still rough going. And I'm telling you, if you don't have four-wheel drive, I wouldn't set foot out of the door right now. Okay, folks, this is uh, emergency television. It's not pretty, but it's useful, so pay attention. <laughs> the roads are littered with people who ventured out and lived to regret it. We tried to help. <laughs> what do you think? I got you a clear about four foot. We've sort of armed ourselves, and so should you, if you go out with a couple of essentials. 
We've got a shovel and a broom. And other hazards face us later tonight. If we lose power, and we might, there are a couple real basic things to remember. First, check your neighbors. If they have lights, maybe it's just your own fuse box, so then you check your own fuse box. If the whole street doesn't have power, of course, then it may be neighborhood-wide. Now, right now, before anything happens, check to make sure that you've got batteries in your flashlights. Have a flashlight ready. If you plan on using candles, again, this sounds so basic, but it's so dangerous. Keep the candles away from draperies, from kids, from newspapers, from anything that's flammable. Don't rely on your ovens for heat. And if you have to have batteries, don't drive. Check now to see if you can borrow some from your neighbors if you haven't got any at home. And there's more reasons to be neighborly. Find out now who on your street has a cellular phone and who has four-wheel drive in case there's an emergency. In case the phone lines go down, you'll have communication and you'll have a ride if you've got to get someplace. Folks, good luck. Out in the thick of it, Meg Grant, Channel 10 News. Good advice. Commodore Barry Bridge is closed at this hour because of high winds. The storm uh, still has lots more to come. Earlier today, they uh, had to postpone the Flyers game, and uh, let's take a look at a picture here uh, because we can tell you why. A pane of glass was apparently blown out during the first period of the hockey game on the Patterson Avenue side of the spectrum. There's the pane of glass. No injuries were reported. Uh, the game was, however, stopped after the first period. It'll be played at a later date, that date to be announced. Uh, right now, I guess where they, where they broke off play, it was a 1-1 tie. Uh, between the Flyers and the Kings, and uh, we don't know how many uh, fans have uh, uh, showed up for that, but the, the game has been, uh, it will be rescheduled. Let's take a look also uh, right now at some of the pictures from uh, Ocean City, New Jersey, and we'll see what the, the situation looked like there earlier today. Uh, you can see what the situation is. They had a midday high tide that flooded some streets in the low-lying coastal areas. Officials are even more concerned, though, that the late-night high tide that will come somewhere after 11 o'clock in the evening is going to cause even more serious flooding. And even though you're looking at Ocean City here, the residents of some streets in Bradley Beach and Highlands were ordered to evacuate, and dozens of towns set up shelters for voluntary evacuees. Governor Jim Florio declared a state of emergency, and also in New Jersey, Newark Airport uh, is closed. Let's take a look. Uh, we'll take you north now and uh, take a look at Bucks County and see what the situation is there. Earlier today, there was lots of blowing snow. Uh, a shed was knocked over by the wind, and you'll see it there. Uh, strong, gusty winds going uh, throughout the entire Bucks County area. This is Bristol Road. Uh, it was mostly impassable. The road was closed earlier today because of uh, uh, blowing snow. Even four-wheel drive vehicles had it uh, very, very tough um, getting through uh, up there in Bucks County. They got a little bit more snow up in Bucks County than they did here in uh, um, the Delaware Valley. It's, uh, it was really a mess earlier today, and even though we seem to be getting a, a break in the action and giving the road crews a chance to get out there, and uh, also the Pico crews take a look at some of the, the power lines that might have been uh, hit by some of that heavy weight, wet snow earlier today, uh, and get some of the tree branches out of the streets. Um, don't be fooled because there is more of this uh, to come. Right now, maybe just a, a little time for the kids and the dogs and, uh, and some fun. We're going to go to Sicklerville, New Jersey, and Bill McCarthy, who's on the phone right now. Bill, I understand you witnessed a roof collapse down there. Yeah, I was in the supermarket when it was coming down on top of myself and my uh, four-year-old daughter and 16-year-old uh, and daughter. Where was the supermarket? In, uh, in the center of Sicklerville. It's on uh, Williamstown uh, New Freedom Road just uh, above the intersection of Sicklerville Road. And what was the problem? Was it the high winds or the weight of the snow? No, it wasn't the high winds because uh, at that time the winds really weren't that bad. I would guess that it had to be the weight of the, the snow. We, we have had rain down here probably for a couple of hours before that. And, uh, and the wet snow, we must have at least uh, five to eight inches of snow. And it's a flat roof building. And I would guess the weight of the the, the water on top of the snow. We got a warning uh, about two or three minutes before the uh, the real ceiling started to collapse. We were on the opposite side of the store, and we heard this loud crash. And uh, like a lot of other silly people, uh, I come zipping over uh, to see what happened. And um, over the dairy case, uh, part of the drop ceiling and the lighting fixtures had dropped on the uh, uh, the dairy case and uh, and the bakery shelves. And 
Well, we're just looking at that. Uh, a couple of the customers said, hey, you better get out of here real quick because I think there's more of the ceiling coming down. And then some of the employees at the bakery department came out and they're telling us the same thing. And you could look up and you could see where the, the ceiling tiles were starting to belly. And, of course, silly, foolish me, I need one more thing to finish my shopping trip. And I'm standing in the aisle trying to grab that, and all of a sudden there's this god-awful roar. And the ceiling and the lighting fixtures and everything is falling down on top of us. And my four-year-old daughter is in about maybe 20 feet in front of me. So I took off running down the aisle and grabbed her and, and, and shoved her out the door. My 16-year-old had already gone to the, to the front of the store. And we took off out of there uh, <laughs> uh, about as fast as we could. What is the name of this uh, supermarket in Sicklerville? Yeah, uh, Shopping Bag. And how many people were in the store when this happened? Uh, I'm guessing between the employees and, uh, and the shoppers, there was maybe 50, 75 people in there. And as far as I know, everybody got out. Uh, there was a lot of water pouring down through the ceiling in the aisle that was right over uh, next to where I was, which leads me to believe that, that, that it was the weight of the water and the, uh, and the snow that caused the ceiling to collapse. But we were really lucky that, that nobody was actually under uh, uh, the ceiling where the water was coming in, and, uh, and nobody was was uh, was damaged. But I had I, I had to be bent over completely to get underneath the parts of the ceiling that uh, that were hanging down in the aisle that I was in. Wow! It was kind of scary. <laughs> I bet it was. Bill McCarthy, uh, who was in uh, Sicklerville, uh, in a supermarket when the roof came crashing in this afternoon. Uh, we have. Channel 10's Dennis Waltering, who's been uh, covering uh, this storm throughout the city since, uh, since it began early this morning, and he has this report of what happened in the city. This lady in Frankfurt swept the snow from her steps when she got up this morning, but it was a futile effort. More than 200 plows in the city, some of them bolted onto trash trucks, couldn't even keep up with the snow. In Center City, early this afternoon, cars plowed through slush, and this guy and ran into a bus stop not only to wait for a ride, but to hide from the storm. Outside, huh? Yeah, I seen some lightning and I heard the thunder and I thought I'd better move under here because I didn't want to take a chance of getting struck. They say the odds are slim, but people hit the lottery too. What do you think of all this? I hope it's the last one of the year. I was looking forward to buying some shorts for the springtime, but I guess I won't be getting them today or tomorrow. For a lot of people, it was a mistake just going outside today. Cars were getting snowbound in drifts and stuck on icy hills. We're on Montgomery Drive in Fairmont Park. We're getting pelted with ice. It's like a sandstorm yeah, now. This weather out here. And look what's happening over here. All these cars are stranded. They couldn't get up the hill. They're sliding, slipping, and this guy in the four-wheel drive is pulling them out. I'm sitting here making money. How I much they pay you? Uh, whatever they got. I mean, I asked for 25, and if they have 15 or 10, whatever. This guy, Dr. Michael Perchuk, was only out because he had to make rounds today. Now his car is stranded. He has to get help out. Yeah, which one are you? The uh, gray Mercedes down there. Okay. He was pulling somebody else out. I had to stop, and once I stopped, I was stuck. And look how this storm transformed appearances. West River Drive looked like a mountain road. The roads are just piled with snow. For hours, this was a snow fight. The plows were losing and the flakes were winning. With all the sliding and pushing, a lot of people felt like they were spinning their wheels. Dennis Wolfring, Channel 10 News. Uh, we're told that we have an update on the uh, Syracuse game, the Syracuse game with St. John's at NCAA uh, semi-regional final with uh, Dave Culberth. Let's go to that right now. Syracuse in orange against St. John's early on. Adrian Autry helped Syracuse go on a 14-2 run. They went up 19-13. And then the garden in New York sprung a leak. A guy had to come out with a mop in between baskets to dry it up. But it didn't seem to affect the orange men too much because they kept right on running into that end of the court. They talked about it, decided to continue with the game. And right now it's at the half with Syracuse leading St. John's 33-26. Dave Colberth, Channel 10 Sports. And also on the sports note, uh, the uh, Sixers game has been canceled and it will be rescheduled, I'm told, uh, probably midweek. Uh, we have a couple of cancellations here. The American uh, Legion National Commander dinner tomorrow at the Ramada Inn in Essington has been postponed. And also the uh, West Side Story performance by the students at Cherry Hill West has been rescheduled for March 21st. Canceled tonight, Night Mother, the old Academy Players shows tonight and tomorrow. 
And as I said before, the uh, Sixers game has been uh, postponed until sometime midweek. Let's go live now to uh, Andrew Glassman, Channel 10's Andrew Glassman, standing by in Atlantic City. Andrew, what's the situation down there right now? Well, good afternoon, Ken. We are officially, officially in the lull mode at this hour. In fact, the weather out here is uh, comparatively, well, anything is comparatively nice to what it was this morning. But every once in a while, it seems like the sun uh, threatens to poke through. The wind has calmed down, the rain is just a slight drizzle, and as you can see behind me, there's a uh, pretty decent sized uh, crowd that has emerged out of the casinos, now taking it upon themselves to walk the boardwalk, but that is of some concern to emergency officials because they tell me that this is going to be the case uh, all night long tonight. It's going to be a lull, and then high winds, and then another lull, so uh, I think they fear seeing this uh, habit develop of people coming out of uh, their uh, safe shelter to uh, enjoy the scenery because they could very well be caught off guard and we have seen uh, some strong winds here this afternoon of course we have shown them to you as far as the, as the tides are concerned the last measurement uh, we had uh, told us that the tides were running three feet above normal and so they expect at high tide tonight uh, around 11:30 or midnight that the tides will come in four or five feet above normal now the residents around here know how to measure this so i will tell them that the expected tide is nine feet above mean low water and uh, those of you who are in situations that uh, could be in a flood area you know who you are and so that is the expected uh, incoming tide tonight now the red cross has set up a lot of emergency shelters in this area and at this point we're told that uh, not too many people are taking advantage of this but if you in fact need to seek shelter for tonight i'm going to read you a list uh, of uh, the various shelters in the various seaside communities that you can go to. In Atlantic City, at the Martin Luther King School, there is a Red Cross shelter at that location. In Brigantine, the shelter is at the St. Phillips School. In Summers Point, the Jordan Avenue School is serving as shelter tonight. In Margate, the Red Cross is setting up a shelter at Union Elementary School. In Hamilton Township, the shelter is at the Shaner School. And in Egg Harbor Township, the high school there should open up at around 9 o'clock uh, tonight. For those of you who know that your homes are going to be flooded with a tide of 9 feet above mean low water. One other consideration to keep in mind at this hour, for those of you who live on the barrier islands, those islands could be cut off a good 5 or 6 hours before the high tide hits. So, doing a little elementary math, if the high tide is due in around 11 o'clock tonight, five or six hours puts us at just about an hour from now six o'clock when areas like the uh, bridge from uh, Brigantine to Atlantic City could be flooded out so you could be stranded at that point that's something you need to take into consideration as the tide is going to start shifting now uh, and moving back toward our position here that's the latest from Atlantic City Ken Andrew, we talked a lot this morning about uh, beach erosion down there during the high tide this morning and possibly more coming up at high tide tonight. Uh, you've had a chance now to, to get a little bit closer to the water line and uh, see what uh, happened this morning. What's the situation with that? Well, as, as we've uh, pointed out a couple of times uh, earlier today, there was a six or six and a half foot wall of sand uh, in this location right here. And you can see just little remnants of that on the left hand side of your screen it's about a two or three foot mound now but as for the rest of it over here where I'm standing it was really uh, no contest the uh, ocean water simply washed up and took it out uh, like a, a child's sandcastle uh, it washed right away but let's say this uh, they spent a good amount of time yesterday plugging up the holes and the gaps in that berm it did hold off the first high tide this morning but now what we're left with is an exposed section of the boardwalk here uh, that's going to have to contend with the high tide tonight. Well, that's probably not very good news for the uh, resort operators, uh, but uh, hopefully it'll survive and uh, we'll be able to have uh, you know, a, a yeah. good beach for this summer. One more thing I wanted sure. to mention is I, we are absolutely astounded at the quantity of people that are just going about this storm as if nothing was really happening, as if the situation were not really serious or potentially life-threatening and of course uh, we know there have been fatalities from this storm already not in our area fortunately but uh, down south of here uh, we have seen a tremendous amount of people walking the streets out for a stroll uh, driving around and uh, you can't stress it enough that it is just not going to be permissible tonight 
So the last time to make plans for tonight is turning out to be right now. Okay, Andrew, thank you very much for that live report. Good advice as well. A lot of people are asking now, uh, because there's been a break in the storm, is it uh, okay to go outside? Let's ask meteorologist John Belaris, who's been watching the storm right from the very start as our uh, Storm of 93 team coverage continues. John, uh, is it safe to go out and take a look? Uh, there's a lull right now, a temporary lull. Maybe if you want to step outside a little bit, just stretch out there, survey maybe your home, some of the damage, uh, maybe bring the pet out there, but close by for the next couple of hours because look at the radar we have a break we have a big break in the storm so that's why the low but the storm center itself is still down in in this region in here so you can see it's not over yet and all the precipitation the snow the sleet uh, and uh, basically the snow and sleet and even some rain is still look at it it's covering most of central western Pennsylvania all the way down through West Virginia down through the Virginias and still this as this storm begins to continue to move and pull off in this direction, it will begin to pull in the backlash. So somewhere between 8 o'clock tonight and midnight tonight, round two will take place, and the hurricane force winds, or the very, very strong winds, will once again kick in. There's a lull now, but it's not over yet because round two is waiting in the wings. And tonight's map, there's the storm center. As of 7 o'clock, it should be right around the Chesapeake Bay and then begin to pull away after that. Snow amounts by tomorrow morning, uh, 7 a.m. We have officially 11 inches of snow in Philly. I'll give you some of the snow amounts as we're on the subject. Uh, on the ground right now in Somerdale, New Jersey, 10 inches. Haddon Township has 11 and a half inches of snow on the ground. Uh, Cherry Hill, 13 inches of snow on the ground. Wilmington, Delaware, 10 inches of snow. Uh, in this city, in Philadelphia, 11 inches officially on the ground. King of Prussia, 14 inches of snow. Allentown, 14.3 inches of snow. Uh, Harrisburg, 10 inches, and Willow Grove in Pennsylvania reporting 13 inches of snow. Now, you can see by tomorrow morning, 10 to 15 is not much more, but uh, can we go back to that map? I'd like to show uh, some of the snow amounts, what we're forecasting by 7 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning, if it's possible. If not, 10 to 15 inches of snow will be on the ground. There we go. Thank you very much. 10 to 15 inches of snow will be on the ground in the city and surrounding suburbs. Um, what I'm telling you, we have 11 now, so we're expecting a few more inches overnight. It's really hard to forecast just how much more snow will fall tonight, but there will be more accumulating snow. How much? It's, it's just too tough to call at this hour. Atlantic City, 4 to 6 inches of snow will be the general rule. Uh, 12 to 24 will be the numbers in the Lehigh Valley, and 20 to 35 inches of snow will be the numbers, uh, numbers up in the Poconos. So you can see we still have a long way to go. It's not over yet, folks. Tomorrow, the storm system begins to pull away, and we get the hurricane force winds, westerly winds tomorrow. Temperatures, by the way, will be diving tonight. Everything will freeze up below the freezing mark, down in the 20s, even some teens in the Lehigh Valley and the Poconos. Wind chill factors late tonight, 15, 25 below zero. Wind chill factors tomorrow with the howling hurricane force gust tomorrow out of the westerly direction, minus 15 to minus 25. And I think blizzard conditions will continue west of the city tomorrow, not with the snow coming down, but with the snow already on the ground and whipping around, and uh, power lines, of course, will continue to snap, and some trees will continue to come down. Now, this interesting note, the shore will get pounded tonight. Andrew told you that, 11 o'clock, 11.43, the high tide, and then a couple of hours, two, three hours after that, the back bays will be flooded. Now, tomorrow, the opposite effect. At the shore, the winds, 60, gusting to 75, we call this blowout tides, meaning the water in the bays will rush out quickly and any of the uh, boats can actually hit and just kind of sink in the mud for a little while. So just the opposite effect tomorrow and we'll continue to keep you updated uh, throughout the evening and the nighttime hours, okay? All right, uh, John, before you go one more time, uh, remind us when this thing is liable to come back at us tonight uh, so that if you have plans to go out and have a little bit of fun or try to get out there and shovel out your driveway, what time should you be uh, probably making plans to get back in the house? Uh, do it do it right now from about uh, up until about eight o'clock tonight i think you're fairly safe but keep an eye on the on the sky and then after that we start to get into round two between eight o'clock and twelve o'clock tonight the winds will dramatically increase once again and there will be snow moving back into the region where it's not snowing now right these breaks kind of took you by surprise a little bit huh it we, yeah it really did it wrapped up so quickly the computer models did not forecast this it was really beyond forecasting skills we've never handled a storm system like this so it wrapped up so quickly and it, it, it dragged up what we call a dry tongue, some dry air, and it just kind of surged up the East Coast. It's a nice break. It's a nice break, but actually don't get lulled into a uh, false sense of security with this one. It's acting just like a hurricane as the center of the storm. It's a big one.
pulls on by, it's round two, and the winds will be just as vicious late tonight and tomorrow morning as they were this afternoon. Very good. Almost like being in the eye of a hurricane. Thank you very much, John Belaris. We're going to go to the phones now. Mark Domenico, the assistant um, to the mayor of Wilmington, Delaware. And uh, I'd like to ask you, Mark, if uh, this break has given your crews enough uh, time to get out there and clear up some of the problems on the highways. Mark, are you there? <laughs> I think he's uh, on the line but talking to somebody else right now. Let, can we try one more time? Mark, are you there? Hello, Mark. Guess not. All right. Well, let's do this. We're going to uh, continue with our team coverage of the storm of 93. We're going to take uh, a report from Meg Grant right now and a look at some of the storms of the past. These still pictures were taken exactly 105 years ago today in 1888. That's when a storm called the White Hurricane blasted the Northeast. Philadelphia got 15 inches of snow. Farther north, they got a whole lot more. And you might remember this snowstorm, the blizzard of 1978. Traffic in the city was at a standstill, and everybody had to grab a shovel to dig their cars out of the enormous snowdrifts. And this was the really last big blizzard, the one that dumped two feet on the Delaware Valley in February of 1983. Most cars didn't even get that far. They were buried under huge drifts of snow. There was a ton of snow. In fact, many tons of it and no place to put it. The city actually had to truck snow out of the area. Thousands of travelers were stranded at Philadelphia International Airport. They ended up sleeping on the floors because the roads were so bad they couldn't go anyplace else. The airport bar was a popular a spot. And bartenders had to work a whole lot of overtime. How long have you been here yourself? Eight years. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> With airports closed from uh, uh, just about Boston on down through Atlanta, you can bet that that's a popular spot again tonight. Mark Delmerico, we tried for a little bit earlier on the phone. He's the assistant to the mayor of Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, Mark, are you there now? Yes, I am. I, I, was, I wanted to ask you if the break in the storm here is allowing your crews to get out there and uh, get a head start and clean this thing up before round two. Sure, the, our public works department is continuing the plowing of the streets that began at 1 o'clock a.m. Uh, this morning. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Department is clearing trees that have been downed on uh, roadways and thoroughfares. And we're continuing with our uh, standing by at the ready at our emergency operations center down here at the McLaughlin Public Safety Building. How much snow did you get down there to, this afternoon? The report as of 3 o'clock this afternoon was 11 inches of snow, and we've just received information that's a strong possibility, according to the National Weather Service, that we're going to expect uh, possibly uh, 8, 8, uh, 10 more inches, possibly. The National Weather Service indicating uh, between 9 and uh, midnight, uh, maybe maybe 6 to 8 inches. Right, it's you'd have to certainly not you'd over. You'd have to verify that with uh, Pennsylvania or somebody official, but we've got a strong possibility that there's going to be some additional snow uh, between 9 and midnight. Right, our meteorologist John Belaris just confirmed that for us as uh, well tonight. Newcastle County down there is reporting 10,000 power outages. So what's the situation in the Wilmington area? We have the same information that we've just got from Newcastle County uh, via Newcastle County Emergency Planning, State of Delaware Emergency Planning. Uh, the information from Delmarva Power and Light. We're doing that uh, type of surveying ourselves right now in the city to determine the impact. We don't have uh, significant reports of any other uh, damage in the city aside from some traffic lights that were dismounted and the trees that I mentioned that were down uh, earlier and then were on their way to pick, pick those up right now. Okay, as things stand right now, what's the biggest problem you have in the city down there? The biggest problem right now is making the residents aware that we, uh, Mayor Solis, has requested that they, uh, residents of Wilmington, remain in their homes unless absolutely necessary because we expect some, some nasty weather to keep coming our way later this evening. Absolutely good advice. Mike Delmerico, assistant to the Wilmington Mayor, thank you very much for talking with us today. Uh, we're going to take a look at some uh, highway closings, but I also want to mention that uh, staying in your homes is a, a very good uh, piece of advice, even if it looks clear outside, and that's because uh, it gives the work crews a chance to catch up on uh, the plowing, etc., and you're not clogging up the highways, even if it is passable where you live right now. All the interstate highways in Pennsylvania are closed. Interstate highways, all of them closed at this moment uh, as the crews get out there and try to work. I-76, it's an interstate highway also closed within the Philadelphia city limits.
That's the Schuylkill Expressway, of course. I-95 between Woodhaven Road and the Philadelphia International Airport closed. Anything else? The Commodore Barry Bridge, yes, closed. Governor Casey has um, declared a state of emergency in Pennsylvania. We have, we have Governor Casey now? We do. We're going to go live to Governor Casey, not live. We're going to go on tape to Governor Casey and uh, his address uh, declaring this a state of emergency in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, of course, that happened a little bit uh, earlier today, and uh, that swings uh, all kinds of things into operation in terms of emergency facilities. And uh, uh, we're hoping that, uh, that uh, everything... Uh, Oh, we're going we're gonna to take a break first. All right, well, let's do that. We'll regroup and come back. The storm coverage of 93 continues in just a moment. Make a statement about the car you drive with the specially equipped Liberty Edition Cadillac Sedan DeVille. The Liberty Edition includes outstanding options, perforated leather seating, cabriolet roof, gold ornamentation, specially designed wheels, and other special Liberty features. A savings of $14.90 on this distinctive Cadillac. Plus, register to win a luxurious weekend at the Greenbrier, America's world-renowned resort. This limited-time sweepstakes and savings offer only at your Cadillac Super Network dealer. You're witnessing a highly sophisticated conversation. It's between the BMW 325i and the driver. It's not based on the language of words, but of feelings. How the wheel feels to the fingertips. How the pedals feel to the foot how the seat feels to the body. But what's truly amazing isn't that this entire conversation took place in just 2.7 seconds, but that it took place at all. Stay with Channel 10 for weather updates as we track the storm of 93. Channel 10's coverage of the storm of 93 continues. I'm Ken Matz, live in the Channel 10 newsroom with our storm update. And the first storm-related death is now being reported here in Pennsylvania. Officials report the death was stress-related. Uh, the victim apparently uh, trying to shovel snow in Carbon County uh, collapsed and died. And as we've been reporting, Governor Robert Casey has declared a state of emergency within Pennsylvania. And I believe we have that tape available now. Governor Casey. At 3 p.m. today, I issued a proclamation of disaster emergency for Pennsylvania because of the severe winter storm. Because of the heavy snow, high winds, and near zero visibility, all interstate highways in the state have been closed. State police have been directed to assist travelers now on the interstate. I strongly urge our people not to drive except in case of emergency. Please stay off the road for your own safety. The Disaster Emergency Proclamation authorizes and directs all state, county, and municipal authorities to do whatever is necessary to protect the public health and safety. I urge the understanding and cooperation of our people with all public agencies in our common effort to protect the health and safety of our people during this emergency. Uh, it's important to note that that is the first such declaration of emergency since the uh, 1970s, the late 70s, uh, when one was issued during an ice storm. In Harrisburg, just a short while ago, the lieutenant governor told reporters, quote, we are fighting a losing battle against the elements, and that's even with the breaks that we've seen this afternoon. So this continues to be a very serious storm. You just heard about the first Pennsylvania fatality, nationwide 16 dead, 13 in Florida because of this tremendous winter storm that is not over. Let us emphasize it is not over. 7, 8 o'clock tonight, we're going to get the backlash from the storm and more high winds and more snow. Let's take a look at the... Uh, there's also a state of emergency in New Jersey and a limited state of emergency in Delaware. I'm told by the producer that we should mention that. Let's take a look at the cancellations that we have right now. Uh, all city SEPTA bus and trolley service, the Market Frankfurt L, all suburban bus lines except 101 and 102, and SEPTA's R8, all canceled. The regional commuter rail lines are running at least an hour and a half delayed. The Broad Street subway is running and it is on schedule if you can get to the Broad Street subway. All New Jersey transit buses have been ordered off the streets. Patco High Speed Line is up and running today. The shuttle is operating. Uh, between Atlantic City's train station and the casinos. The trains on the Northeast Corridor are operating. However, they are operating with delays today. And Amtrak services are operating in the corridor with delays. 
canceled Amtrak service to Philadelphia, uh, that's Philadelphia to Chicago, and Amtrak service south of Washington. Of course, uh, that's where the, uh, the snow hit hardest uh, as far as Amtrak was concerned right now. But uh, those situations may also change um, throughout the evening. Uh, we have to tell you also that uh, airports have been experiencing problems, and many of them are closed basically from New York south to Atlanta. U.S. Air is shut down throughout New England as well, and also Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Charlotte, Washington area, the New York area. Hundreds of flights have been canceled. Lots of people have been stranded uh, from uh, all those airports, including Philadelphia International. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Street Road in Warminster right now and see what the situation is out there. Um, this, I believe this was earlier today. Is that right, BJ? Yes, it is. It was about an hour ago, he tells me, and uh, you can see the limited visibility here uh, and uh, the snow still coming down. At that point, it was probably mostly rain. Look at the uh, wires bowing there because of the weight of the uh, heavy snow rain. Uh, tonight, you're going to have more of that. There you see the high winds in evidence with the flags there. You're going to see more of that tonight. And I'm also told that tonight's snow could be a little bit lighter, in other words, less wet, and that means that the potential for drifting is going to be uh, increasing overnight. So work crews are out there, they're taking advantage of this uh, break in the action this afternoon to try to uh, get some of the major routes open as fast as possible because uh, they may have to start all over again tonight and uh, work harder to prevent um, the uh, roads that have just been cleared from drifting over again. Um, as you watch this, I can tell you that postal deliveries in the city were spotty today. Uh, even though uh, you know the U.S. Postal Service's motto, including gloom of night, but the, today's snow turned uh, quite a number of the carriers away, but maybe before they got to your door. Uh, we know that the Flyers game was postponed because of a pane of glass being blown out during the first period of the game. It ended, uh, uh, when it ended, uh, it was a 1-1 tie. Uh, take a look at this uh, shot again from Warminster. You see disabled cars all over the street. If that happens to be yours, um, that's not good for the road crews tonight as they uh, try to go out there and clear those streets off. That's why we've been advising people stay home, even though it uh, may look pretty good during the break today. Uh, we, have, we have some live pictures now from uh, Horsham, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at that and see what the situation is out there on uh, Route 611. We see emergency vehicles trying to get through. And uh, four-wheel drive definitely is the order of the day today. If at all possible, um, don't go out unless you have uh, four-wheel drive, and even then, not unless you have a specific destination and a good reason. But uh, you can see in uh, Horsham, uh, they're doing the best they can. A lot of the street lights there on uh, flash, that may or may not be because of uh, an electrical problem, because, uh, as you heard, there have been a lot of power outages throughout the Delaware Valley. And the snow is deep up there, it's a little bit deeper than it was uh, right here in the Philadelphia area. But Route 611 uh, is, uh, uh, is looking pretty barren out there today. No, uh, nobody out there, people apparently heeding our advice to stay off the road unless they have some kind of emergency or a specific destination that they must absolutely get to. If you're walking like this, these people doing the right thing, walk through the snow. It's uh, probably not the uh, easiest thing to do, but it's much better for you if you stay off the roadways, even though it might be tempting if that roadway has been plowed to walk in the center of it because it's easier going. Uh, walking in the center of that roadway puts you at risk of cars that cannot stop on smooth glazed surfaces, and there's going to be a lot of them tonight. We're going to have some pictures coming up as well from uh, Philadelphia International Airport where the flights uh, have been, uh, oh, we're going to show you JFK first. Okay, let's go to, uh, to JFK uh, Airport in New York where uh, dozens of flights have been canceled. There you see them de-icing an American Airlines plane. Uh, all for naught because the airport is closed now, as I understand. Maybe they've tried to get a few flights out. That's Air Jamaica. Good destination on a day like today. I wish I was on board that one myself. But you can see the airports are having the same kinds of problems that the local road crews are having around town. That is that they have to uh, use these pieces of heavy equipment to get the snow off the runway even as more is coming down. And the high winds, of course, affect uh, all kinds of things in terms of uh, flight patterns, etc. Uh, winds up to 60 miles per hour have been reported in the New York area, off the Long Island beaches especially, but uh, the last report we had was that LaGuardia and uh, Kennedy airports were closed and that they had 10 inches and counting of snow in Central Park. This is a very big storm, really is. Let's take a look at some of the video that we have from Long Island uh, that's available right now. 
This is uh, West Hampton, and you can see that uh, the snow got right on down. Oh, look at the waves crashing onto the beaches there. Uh, much the same situation. The high tide just after 11 o'clock this morning um, put a lot of heavy waves uh, into the coastal areas up around the New York area and uh, threatening the structures as you see and the beaches as we know them. You might go back this summer to some of these beaches and not see these uh, houses be in the same condition that they were uh, yesterday. Um, Already you see the broken out windows due to the high winds, and as we said, that the, the winds had been reported up to about 60 miles per hour there. 16 days.